We're here this morning to examine the importance of energy innovation to economic growth and our nation's long-term competitiveness. So you'll note that uh, I'm not joined by my ranking member yet this morning. He is in executive session in Senate Armed Services and has asked that uh, I go ahead and begin the, the hearing this morning. He will be here. Um, uh, he was actually the one who first presented this idea to me that <clears throat> the committee should examine this as we are looking at, at our priorities here. We've held hearings on, on innovation throughout the year, and, and while we've largely focused on what we see as our best policy-making opportunities, today we're going to be looking more broadly at why it matters for the economy, and Senator Manchin has been, been very, very <coughs> focused in, in that effort, and um, we were pleased to be able to put together such a, such a solid panel here this morning to help us with that. So. Senator Manchin will be in, and we expect others as well. But uh, it's a busy Thursday morning in the United States Senate, so we're going to kick off the conversation. This, this is an important connection as we think about, about why innovation, and specifically energy innovation, is such a significant con contributor to economic growth. We may not always realize or appreciate it, but energy innovation is critical to our success as a nation. Historically, it's enabled higher standards of living and the development of modern society from electrification to long-distance transportation. I, I often um, share the, the story and the perspective that is contained in one of Robert Caro's books. Um, and this is, uh, is it Masters? It is Masters. Masters. And uh, there's one chapter, and it's called Sad Irons. And I, when I'm speaking to, to women's groups, uh, I will often reference this specific chapter uh, because it speaks about life in, in eastern Texas before electrification in the 30s and what the life of a woman was like. And I've not ever spent any time in east Texas, but I can only imagine that this time of year it's not particularly pleasant when it's really hot. And when the men go off to, to, to herd, the, herd the cattle or do whatever they do on the range, um, the, the woman, the women, are left to, to keep the home. And keeping the home means first going down and hauling the water and boiling the water. But you got to stoke the fire, make a fire in order to do that. Um, it speaks about just the physical damage to a woman's body after years of, of hauling heavy water, multiple trips back and forth, the, the rigors of, of, just, of just this very um, heavy, heavy work and labor. And they talk about the, the I'm telling a story about sad irons. Not me. No, 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 no. But they talk about the various days and how... Um, the worst day of the week is Thursday, because Thursday is the day that they do the ironing. And so it's not only hauling the wood and making the fire, but then standing over the hot fire with the hot iron and ironing the, the stiff jeans that have been hung out to dry and the repetition and the heat. And you think about that. These are, some of these women are still alive today. Whose, whose physical aspects are still, still apparent in that labor that they um, endured every day because they didn't have energy. They couldn't turn the stove on. They couldn't turn the faucet on. So when you think about those ways that, that women have truly become empowered, they are the true beneficiaries of what we see with energy innovation. Today, on a national scale, new energy technologies are lowering costs, reducing environmental pollution, and supporting hundreds of thousands of well-paying jobs in the process. Energy innovation will be no less important going forward. I happen to believe it's the best way to address the challenges that we face on both energy security and climate change. Whether we're looking to bolster our energy supply or reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, innovation will need to be front and center and recognized as our best solution. 
And as we consider energy innovation, we want to place special emphasis on our rural areas. We've taken care to include their perspectives in our discussion today because we recognize that there are tremendous opportunities for energy innovation in rural America that are worthy of our attention and our discussion. And I think that's particularly true in our state of Alaska. We've already seen how new innovative technologies can reduce our reliance on costly diesel fuel, but we know that we've got great potential, enormous potential for much more. The sheer size of Alaska makes it very expensive to transport fuel. Many of our communities are paying upwards of seven, eight dollars a gallon. Um, new technologies, whether they be in renewables or, or even micro reactors, I, I look at these and say these, these innovations will, will help to make a real difference in the local economies and in the lives of so many Alaskans. It was earlier this summer I was, I was up north uh, in the community of, of Cordova. This is a small coastal fishing community. And they, uh, they were cutting the ribbon on a new grid scale uh, battery there. This is not interconnected to, to a terrestrial grid. They have to maintain their own microgrid there in Cordova. The town has, has always relied on, on diesel generation to back up their, their small hydro. But thanks to this new energy storage facility, they now have lower costs. They are able to utilize much, much more of their abundant hydropower resource. They've got far fewer fluctuations in the electricity. And what this has done, what, what this cheaper, more reliable, affordable power, I guess affordable, cheaper, it has, it has allowed this fishing community to grow in a way that they could otherwise not. They're now the fifth largest um, uh, fishing port by volume in the state. Why? Because the processors can locate there. They can, they can make ice in a way that is affordable. They can do the processing that they need. You can't do that if you don't have power. That fishing community would be bypassed if they didn't have that uh, power. We, we up north have always been innovators, and we don't just do it because we have to, but we're pioneers. We, we like breaking new trail. I think that that's an important part of it. Um, yesterday, we had some good news out of Department of Energy's Office of Indian Energy. They announced competitive grants for the communities of Igiagic, Quithluk, and Togiak. Igiagic is now on everybody's map. Everyone can pronounce Igiagic because it's, it's home to this new RivGen system where we're going to be tapping into that... Uh, that marine hydrokinetic energy there for this small community, getting them once again off diesel. So lots of good stories to be told. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more from you, um, uh, Mr. Vandenberg, um, with the with the uh, uh, all the innovation that's coming out of Launch Alaska. So we're we're pleased to have you here and tell us how how your startup incubator is enabling companies to be successful in Alaska. Um, Mr. Vandenberg is joined this morning by uh, Dr. Brian Anderson, who's the director of the National Energy Technology Laboratory. Very pleased to have you. Uh, John Deskins is the director of the Bureau of Business and Economic Research at West Virginia University. I'm sure that Senator Manchin is going to give further introduction there. Uh, Dr. David Hart is a senior fellow at the Information Technology and Innovation Foundation. And Mr. Lee Ragsdale is a senior VP for Grid Infrastructure and Compliance for North Carolina's Electric Cooperative. So got a great panel here this morning. We're looking forward to hearing uh, all the good news that you have to share with the committee. I now turn to <coughs> my friend and colleague, Senator Manchin.